We are now going to look at the special case of zero coupon bonds. Zero coupon bonds, as its name would imply, have no coupon payments. In treasury bills, those zero coupon bonds result from two situations. Number one, it's a treasury bill. It's one, less than one year in length, in which case there's no coupon payments and you only get the par at the end. It's a zero coupon bond. The other case is what is known as a treasury principal strip. And what happens is they take a normal treasury note or bond and strip out and sell the coupon payments in one bundle and the principal payment in another bundle. The principal strip would be one payment because you took away the coupon payments. We now have a zero coupon bond. When we have a zero coupon bond, our yield maturity uh, formula simplifies. We have the three variable case in the top. Now in a zero coupon case, all the C's equal zero and we get the term or the equation listed at the bottom. We take the ending par value and discount it back to the present to come up with the price of the bond. Let's give an example on a six month treasury bill, six months in the future, $1,000 par, and let's say its yield to maturity is 1%. In this case, as you can see, its price is 995.02. All right, let's do another example. Same six-month bond, or not same six-month bond, but still a six-month bond. Now we're going to give you the price, and it's equal to 990. We work it the opposite way. We can find the yield to maturity, and in this case, it is 2%. One further example, let's take a three-year treasury principal strip. It's going to happen three years in the future. We're going to get a thousand dollars three years in the future and our yield to maturity is one percent in this case as you can see we're going to discount that back six periods three years in the future six semi-annual periods in the future that bond would have a price of 970. we can find the or state the yield to maturity in the zero coupon bond case the above is the price equals uh stated that for the bond price is stated as a function of the par and the yield to maturity. We arrange terms and you can see the rearranged terms there at the bottom. Principal strips are going to come into play in the structure of interest rates. So we will talk about that in future modules.